Hello, everyone, and welcome again to our broadcast. Last week, I laid the groundwork for the revelation on how to stay strong and finish your course. This message today comes from a session that I taught at Kenneth Copeland Ministries Word Explosion in Columbia, South Carolina. I take a chapter in my book, The Heart of a Pastor, that deals with finishing your course. Every one of us have a course, an assignment. It's given to us by God, and it's our responsibility to follow it through to the end. But how, you may ask, Ah, stay tuned and you'll get your answer for the part two of Finish Your Course. That's today's broadcast. But before we get into God's Word, here's Jeannie to minister to you in song, a beautiful song. I really like this song. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you as she sings, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. We have a responsibility as believers, as the redeemed, to finish our course. And we cannot leave until we do finish our course. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 5. 2 Timothy chapter 5. And let's look at verse 7. The Apostle Paul says, Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry. I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Now, there was a time, if you go over to Philippians chapter 1, verse 23 through 25, there was a time where Paul said, I'm in a strait betwixt two. I don't know whether I should depart or stay. It's far better for me if I leave, but it's far better for you if I stay. So he said, I'm ready now to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. Now, here's what he qualifies, whether he has finished his course or not. And that's what I want to center up on. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Let's say these three things out loud. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now go over to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. So when Paul said, I fought a good fight, what fight was he talking about? I fought a good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto you are called and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now go over to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Gloria mentioned this this morning. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So without faith, you cannot please God. Paul said, I fought a good fight, the fight of faith. The next thing he said was, I finished my course. Say that out loud. I finished my course. <laughs> Go over to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. My mother used to tell me when she would give me chores to do, she would say, now you can't go down to the corner grocery until you finish your chores. You can't go any place and do anything until you've finished what you have to do. In high school, I got expelled for three days for shooting a firecracker in the classroom. <laughs> Wasn't my fault. My buddy sitting next to me gave me a firecracker and dared me to light it. <laughs> so I was going to pinch the fuse out and get a rise out of him. But the fuse burned right through my fingers and exploded in my hand. And it hurt. And uh, our, our coach, our science teacher, Coach Davis, <clears throat> when he heard the explosion, he, he, didn't, he knew who had done it. <laughs> he turned around, he said, Caldwell, to the office. It wasn't the first time I had been there. <laughs> So I sat there in the principal's office, Dr. Claudie B. Garrison. And he said, you're going to be expelled for three days, but it was semester exams. And he said, uh, if I expel you now, you won't be able to go to the next grade. So because your sister is a cheerleader, <laughs> I'm going to let you take your final exams and you can be expelled the first three days of the new semester. So I was at home for three days. Mama wouldn't let me go and do anything. She made me read. She made me study. She said, you are going to finish what you started. Years later, as a pastor, I was at the Baptist hospital visiting some church folks, praying for them, and I came down through 
the cafeteria and I saw Dr. Garrison, my principal, sitting over there in the corner of the table. So I went over to him and I said, uh, Dr. Garrison, I said, uh, you may not remember me. I said, uh, I'm Happy Caldwell. He said, oh, I remember you. <laughs> I said, you'll never guess what I'm doing today. He said, what? I said, I'm a pastor. He said, you're right. I'd never guess that. <laughs> but mama wouldn't let me quit. She made me finish what I started. One time, me and my buddy, Tom Bellhouse, we were going to float in a fishing boat all the way down where we live. There was a little bayou that ran past our house, Bayou Bartholomew. And I had traced it on the map. It flows into the, into the big river and, and goes down to New Orleans. So we were going to take the summer and we were going to float in a fishing boat all the way to New Orleans. We had a sack lunch. <laughs> we were in high school. And my daddy said, okay, I'll take you down to the bayou and help you launch your boat. He did. Man, we paddled. Some places in that bayou had dried up and you had to carry the boat to the next puddle of water. We'd been gone a half a day. We ate our sandwich. And I said, Tom, we need to find out where we are. So I climbed a tree and I looked. We had only gone a half mile from the bridge. We got in the boat and went back home. We did not finish our course. And I realized how wise my father was. He knew we wouldn't get very far. Well, one time I wanted to go out to the river and spend a week and just, you know, camp by myself. So I took a jungle hammock, five-gallon can of water, and my mother took me out to the river, to the Arkansas River, and just let me out. I had a pistol. I had food for three or four days. And I finished my objective. I finished my course. I stayed until the food was all gone. <laughs> and there were no cell phones, so I had no way to call her to tell her to come get me. I won't, I won't tell you all of the stories. It would take too long. But I learned that what you start, you have to finish. Too many ministers are quitting and giving up. Too many Christians are quitting and giving up. You don't quit. You don't stop doing what God's called you to do. Paul said, I finished my course. Acts 13, verse 36. David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. Did you get it? Yeah. David served his own generation. Now, a lot of people are concerned about legacy. First of all, legacy is not your name on the side of a building. A lot of people are concerned, well, what about my legacy? You're only required to fulfill your assignment. Or Roberts was told to take healing to his generation. He did it. His generation, by and large, had all died off before he died. He, died, he, he lived into his 90s. God didn't let him go home at 88 like he wanted to. Brother Sumrall was told to show God's strength to his generation. He did that. He was a tank for God. He was 40 years my senior, and I couldn't keep up with him. T.L. and Daisy Osborne lived and preached in over 100 nations, especially the nation of India. They took the signs and wonders and miracles. Gordon and Frida Lindsay established, established Christ for the nations. All of these people that came out of the 40s and 50s healing revivals, all of the people that were, were uh, fathers in the faith, the Lord told Brother Hagin to take and teach faith. That's what his assignment was. That's what my assignment is. So everybody has an assignment. Look at your neighbor and say, everyone has an assignment. <laughs> and you can't quit until you've finished your assignment. Go over to Acts 20 and 24. 
Paul said, none of these things move me. Therefore count I my life, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. Notice there is a beginning and an end. Even Jesus in John 17, high priestly intercessory prayer, he said to the Father, Father, I have finished the work that you gave me. On the cross, what did he say? It is finished. The old covenant is finished. The new covenant begins. The, the veil was rent from top to bottom. Uh, the first church I pastored, uh, the Lord told me it would be for a season. And I spent two years trying to figure out how long a season with God was <laughs> until I found out it was from the beginning to the end. <laughs> so everybody has an assignment and you complete your assignment. Psalm 91 verse 16 says, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Amen. Yeah. Habakkuk 2, 1 through 3, we've already read. The next thing Paul said was, I have kept the faith. Now, why is that important? In Jude, Jude 3 and 4, he admonishes the New Testament believers to contend for the faith. Faith is not a car, a house, a suit of clothes, a Rolex watch. That's not faith. Faith is a lifestyle. Faith is the way you live. God's not opposed to you having things. He's opposed to things having you. I remember early in the ministry, we were given a Lincoln Continental Mark V. And when I was getting ready to get another car, um, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to sell this Mark V and I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a, a cheaper car and that way it won't cost you so much. And the Lord did just like you. He laughed. He said, son, you weren't even thinking about me. You're thinking about you. When we built our ministry, the Lord told me that we had to build our church and pay for it as we built it. He said, I don't want you borrowing the money. And it's a good thing because in the early 80s, the interest rates were 18%. He said, I don't want you to borrow the money. I want you to build it and pay for it as you go. But he told me this. He said, if you can't pay full price for a suit of clothes, you can't build a building. And that really ministered to me because I was buying three suits at Berry Manufacturing double knit for $75. Three. Remember the double knit? Yep. Lapels out to here. And, the, and the, the double knit fabric was like a woman's hose. If you get a snag, the whole thing unravels. <laughs> He said, I want you to go find the, the most expensive suit in your city. And at that time was a Hart Schaffner Marks $350. And this was in uh, late, uh, late 70s, early 80s. And I said, why do I have to do that? He said, if you can't pay full price for a suit, you can't build a church. And if you can't build a church, you can't take a city. Everything's relevant. He said, and furthermore, when you go out to eat in a restaurant, he said, you shop down the right-hand side of the page of the menu. I thought about it. I thought, well, that's where the prices are. He said, yeah, you eat price. You don't eat food. You buy the cheapest thing on the menu. All these things are designed to get you to another level. Uh, Gloria was talking about her home. We had built ours, or my wife had built ours <laughs> at the same time they were building theirs. And I can understand that. And we talked about it and I walked into my office, which was going to be my office, and I told my wife and her decorator, I said, I want fluorescent lights and carpet on the floor. And they looked at me like, fluorescent lights and carpet? No, you're getting recessed can lighting and hardwood floors. I said, but I don't want hardwood floors and I don't want recessed lights. And they both looked at me and said, just go back to doing what you were doing before you came in here. So guess what? My office has hardwood floors 
and can lights. But I found a scripture in the Bible in Proverbs. Men, are you listening to this? It says, every wise woman buildeth her house. So I was like, Kenneth, I just said, have at it, girls. Y'all go ahead. And I really enjoyed it. I just, when it was done, I went, I moved in. All of this was designed to teach us how to believe God because our assignments are beyond what we can believe for. I mean, when we started ministry, there, were, there was a week there where we didn't have any money at all, nothing, no buy groceries or anything. And there came a knock on the door, went to the door. And there was a lady there and she said, my husband's a traveling salesman and he stopped at a pay phone to call me, this is before cell phones, and said, the Lord just spoke to him and said, take the Caldwell family $50. They need $50 today. She gave us a $50 bill and left. Man, I thought, praise God. What blessed me was God knew where I lived. <laughs> My wife was humiliated. She said, this isn't faith, this is charity. I said, I don't care what it is. We got $50. <laughs> But then she said, okay, first thing we're going to do is give the tithe. I said, the tithe? I said, well, we hadn't had it long. Can we wait just a little while? <laughs> iron sharpens iron. We learned to walk together in faith. But we didn't know at the time what God was teaching us all this for. And he uses natural things to teach us. He knew that he was going to require of us to do some things that were going to take a lot of faith. And so he began to teach us. The key is not to get sidetracked. The key is to keep your focus, to stay focused on what God has given you. And as I look back over the years, and, and Rob and Tisha, we've known each other for many, many years, and we've been in the same ministerial fellowship, and you know how you have to stay focused or you can get off. You get off into the winds of doctrine. You get off into false doctrine. You get off into all kinds of things instead of staying focused on what God called you to do. Today's message was taken from a chapter in my book, The Heart of a Pastor. I want to encourage you to get this. You don't have to be a pastor to get to order this book. It'll help you. Uh, if you're a believer, do you want the full revelation of finishing your course from beginning to end? Then here's your chance. And here's how you order this book, The Heart of a Pastor. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. The calling of a pastor is the most demanding of the fivefold ministry gifts. Pastor Happy Caldwell's brand new book, The Heart of a Pastor, shares over 30 years of his practical experiences, mistakes, and successes. If you want to answer the call to be a pastor, then you need to get this book, just $16.99. To order your very own The Heart of a Pastor, you may log on to vtntv.com or call 1-800-264-2525. I encourage you to order your copy of The Heart of a Pastor. There's so much in there, and you don't have to be a pastor to order your copy. You know, I love to pray for people to be saved. I remember a situation in Nashville, Tennessee, right after I'd gotten saved. We'd signed a record contract with a record company, Skylight Records in Nashville. We were recording our first album, and we always used to stay with our friend Eddie Miller in his home when we'd go to Nashville and record. Now, Eddie was the writer of the secular song, big classic hit uh, that was made famous by Inkelbert Humperdinck uh, <laughs> called uh, 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 Please Release Me and Let Me Go. Well, Eddie was saved about the same time I was, but his son Stan was staying in the home when we were there one time. We had watched a late night or early morning, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning edition of PTL. It was back in the 70s. And Lulu Roman was giving her testimony. And when she finished, Stan, Eddie's son, came and said, I wish I could experience what she's talking about. Oh, man, I said, Stan, you can. Pray with me right now. I prayed with him. He asked Jesus to come into his heart. He was gloriously born again. 
He ran down the hall, woke up his wife and said, honey, I just got saved. She said, you just got what? He told her what had happened. She said, well, I want to be saved too. Uh, He and his wife got saved and that family has been serving God all these years. Do you know the joy of salvation? If you don't, pray with me right now. Right where you are, home, the hospital, hotel. Just close your eyes, stop what you're doing a minute and just say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Save me now. Take away my sin nature. Give me your righteous nature. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me, filling me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, I'd like you to have the book that's on the screen. It's called God Loves You. This book will help you get started right in your life with the Lord. It's easy to get. Just log on to the website, vtntv.com. You can download the book for free or you can call the toll-free number 1-800-264-2525. Tell the operator you just prayed with Pastor Caldwell and you'd like that book. We'd be happy to send it to you. We're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, let us know. You can email me at prayer at vtntv.com. Or you can call 1-800-264-2525. VTN is also on Facebook. You can find us at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. You can also follow me on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. Be sure and join Jeannie and me next week. Same time, remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If this program has ministered to you, please consider making VTN part of your regular giving. To make a donation or to contact this ministry, write to VTN, P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call 501-223-2525. Today's program is available to watch online. To watch this video on demand, log on to vtntv.com and click watch. You may also order a copy of today's show on DVD by calling 1-800-264-2525. Ask for the offer number on the screen.